this maternal and child nutrition and health research project followed up on the heels of the uh, rapid response nutrition improvement project, which was a three million project that came in 2012 up till 2013, 2014, it closed. And when that project closed, uh, we thought about getting another project on a wider scale trying to address uh, health and nutrition issues. Uh, because by then, if you look at the epidemiology, some of the indicators that we were trying to work on, some were really not doing very well, some were just stagnant and some were uh, regressing. Uptake was very low. So from day one, the PDO, the project development objective was to increase the utilization of community nutrition and health, uh, health services that are being offered in the country. Uh, some of the indicators that we wanted to change were indicators surrounding maternal nutrition, maternal health and child nutrition. For example, in those days, uh, women rarely do go to the health facility during their first trimester. And then they also never completed their three antenatal clinic visits. And at the same time, institutional delivery was very low. We used to have candles to light after Nawek working hours, which was very bad. You know, many accidents can come, fire and other things. We graduated from candle lights to kerosene lamps, you know, just to make sure nurses and doctors see what they are doing, um, especially in the delivery room. Ndax <laughs> Fayko <laughs> Ndax 
sante yalla legui legui ma dem ñu delu continuer wat la farafeñ farafeñ general hospital is a tertiary healthcare facility responsible for providing in tertiary healthcare services to the catchment area populations that we serve and this is the whole of north bank region lower river region and part of central river region um, we receive referrals from all the health facilities across north bank region the lower river region and part of central river region we also provide uh, outpatient services uh, to this catchment area population knowing very well that um, our health facilities are not uh, adequately equipped and well staffed to provide even the basic primary health care services uh, people all over the region and beyond the region comes also to Farafeni General Hospital to seek for um, services. And uh, if you look at the epidemiology of maternal mortality in the Gambia, it's very high. And we thought the only way that we can change uh, that scenario is to make sure that we invest in women, make it so that they go to the health facility as soon as they discover that they are pregnant and also to continue going to the health facility until they deliver and when they deliver also to be attended by a skilled attendant so that in case of any eventuality uh, within the hospital environment somebody can take care of them and we don't only stop there we also wanted them to come after delivery for at least three postnatal care visit uh, because that, those are also times when we lose many of our women. But we don't only stop with women, we also look at the area of children because we knew that uh, infant mortality is high in the country, uh, malnutrition is high in the country. So we also try to look at how to improve the nutritional status of the children. We know the equipment and drug supply is a centralized budget. Uh, we are not giving our allocation in terms of money to provide those uh, uh, services for ourselves. Um, they are centralized, drugs are procured centrally, uh, equipments are procured centrally and then distributed from the central point of delivery as the national pharmaceutical services. So you will see to it that uh, as a result of the demand, um, we usually have shortages, you know, uh, and in some instances even absence, total absence of certain basic uh, equipments. <laughs> abe kore ya ni tel bulule ana keta sama sama wa do ko wato silo ni bukata andu ni beta ibe na la men fanana o fanam do ko ni bela foye batal after ni na ta jam fanani de je janje nyami man fen fe je njande na man ke fe ko ni wuda mo fula la rankili me wuluta mo fula la rankili no botaji nata o tambi taje nte man fem fe je jang aske am am betea you cannot bring a laboring mother on a dry uh, metal bed to the lion she's in in the pain and we are subjecting her to another pain unnecessarily fosa turoke Parce que je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Je suis en train de me faire tout le monde. Ni di wa kumbota ya sika ya bam ibe turo la taro be bala di ni wa susu le koko no wala ni ko be sembo bala ada ifadi di koko no tata wa man turo le daja ni nga turo samba mane do be jenga fole susu do do be jenta susu no ni di ni wa tata na man tu ni na imuruna ni na fa la muini de kono mi na nangi ngala. Oui, mais...
men will travel two to three kilometers to their gardens to fetch water. Where they are fetching water to monkeys and baboons drink from those wells. And uh, as they don't know the sterilizing system, this causes a lot of havoc to the community. The children will have diarrhea uh, and all, that, all type of sicknesses that one can get, skin diseases, and all those things that somebody can get it from the drinking of that water. And also, not only that, it takes time for them to water their gardens, come home, and then start their domestic problems. So, and with those, those who don't know, those who don't have the, the, the knowledge of sterilizing the water, where are the baboons and monkeys drank from, only takes the water like that. They are them alabi, the four nepon jefe jefe. Dah them alatine bobo de kabiyo binyum yo am kama. Wala kama yin am local kama la neka yo hamne yi. Then I dem ji kama, then I dem bobo yo rinavi bobo ogos yo kama yo bari daru. Then I dem ji yo juge fi, dem ji alabi, te lolo neka lolo hamne li lefra lora fetula. Hale yin dawi tam sam mujigi tain bobo yo tam nanaka yo dem ji dem ji gana kiri. Musol batata le num ba ke fang. Catalan four Faroko, Nakataji, Biola J, Nina Holtoten, Katajio, Bondije, Molka Bata Bakel, Tong of Fang, Nimolka Conton, Bacon Buloku, Ning Bolly Killing, Bolly Killing a lot, Bacon Buloku World. Accommodation is a problem before in the health facility. We also have a shortage of drugs in the health facility before. Also, cleansing or uh, sundry materials that are used for uh, cleaning and other uh, uh, environmental sanitation uh, materials are all problems when it comes to uh, the facility. Before, health staff or the nurses are not staying in the campus. Most of them are staying outside where they have a whole facility, which we also, also renovate for them to accommodate them, and it is very far from the, uh, from the health facility. Uh, nurses find it very difficult to be traveling from the village to the health facility. A lot of challenges have been happening and those are affecting the system and of course have an impact on the care of delivery and quality of care being offered to our clients. So some of those challenges include uh, poor infrastructure, uh, lack of medical equipment, insufficient supply of drugs, and of course um, the water shortage, um, the electricity problem. Before, it is very difficult when we have patients that comes like asthmatic patients, we don't have a nebulizing machine. Some of the indicators that we, we are trying to work on, some we are really not doing very well, uh, some we are just stagnant and some we are uh, regressing. So this time around we engaged the bank and told them we want to come up with a bigger, a bigger project you know, that will address not only nutrition issues but also health issues. Based on those, uh, we were able to come up with certain indicators. This type of project has a two sides. It has a demand side and he had a supply side. The supply side was basically dealing with the health facilities and the demand side was dealing with the, uh, the communities. Uh, this project was funded by the World Bank uh, to the tune of 21 million United States dollars. Uh, in RBF, there is this principle uh, of separation of functions. You cannot be the player, the referee, the spectator. Uh, different people have to play so that the conflict of interest issue will not be there 
and then each and every component i mean you have the finance i mean the uh, the phone holder you have the purchaser you have the regulator all of these functions need to be separated so when they did an assessment around in the country and they found out that the agency already had all these things that you need as far as fiduciary uh, arrangement and management are con uh, concerned we have a good procurement system we have a good m a a robust m a system they said okay since nana is a semi-autonomous agency since nana is a subvented agency and is not answerable to the minister of health then we can play the role of phone holding so actually all the monies that were supposed to get into this project you know was lodged at the minister uh, at the national nutrition agency here uh, when we request for money through the Ministry of Finance, they replenish and then we work and then every quarter we write back our reports and send it back to the bank. The Ministry of Health is responsible for the health sector in this country. They are responsible for any implementation of any health activity uh, that goes around in, in, the, in the Gambia. When it, the project came, through support from the World Bank. It was implemented by the Ministry of Health with the National Nutrition Agency. RBF is different because other projects or other financings because we, these are all part of the health financing system. Uh, in order health financing, they use input. You want your laptops, you want your motor vehicles, you want your uh, lab things, you know, you come and they buy it for you. But this time, what we do, or what RBF is all about, you select a number of indicators and say that I want you to work on these indicators. They put it in their business plan. You sign a, you sign a, a kind of a MOU or a contract with them. They go and implement. And if they change, if they report back to you, you don't just go and say, okay, for example, if they say that 100 women attended antenatal clinic, you don't just accept those figures. You have to go back, verify, and counter verify. When you verify and counter verify, you pay them an amount of money. And this money belongs to them. Beyond uh, just data, uh, we also it, it's also um, our mandate to between the the quarterly joinment. So now what we have decided initially, um, Nana will do their own monitoring, and then uh, the RBF committee also will do their own monitoring. So we decided to join the two to make it a joint monitoring, uh, even with the FNS. The FNS also you have the livestock and also an agriculture. So as I said, there are so many entities, stakeholders in this project. So one have to make sure that um, each one of them is playing their role as far as the project is concerned. The, the link between the FNS and the project is that it wants to build the resilience of households in the rural communities, able to consume diversified foods to improve their nutritional levels, particularly for the poor and the vulnerable. So at design, there was a need to kind of put some elements of building resilience for those households through a targeting criteria. I was project the project. So households were targeted based on the nutritional surveillance data from Nana annually. Project bi bala mo duga fini feke problem of kibon daf ñu sonalon. Ana ma bali di ngari. Eh di ngari. Ba be comedian. Di koma ma di ko. Ba di ngali no. Di ngari. Eh. And those households were targeted in the regions and then we moved down to the villages where a community based targeting criteria was set. So the communities were able to give us households that were vulnerable based on some criteria indicators. The community were asked to identify on their own what kind of input they would need to build their nutritional levels by building resilience. So they asked for small ruminants. Uh, small ruminants means sheep and goat. They asked for bucket garden. And they also asked for poultry. And these were supplied to them. 
Je suis je suis un peu plus de temps. Je suis de 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 the committee have a contract, uh, the DCD um, also have a contract, the RAG have a contract, NANA as, a, uh, as an institution also have a contract, the RBF committee also have a contract. So at, at the end of every quarter, we prioritize. We try to um, uh, prioritize like maybe facilities that have issues. Normally, we will uh, visit about 50% of the uh, of the of the facilities. So every quarter, we will come up with issues. Uh, what are the issues that we have found our observation? In fact, we will also look at the data. Which of the facilities has been having mistakes over the past quarter, or having have have lost some fund money? So we look at that. If if we, a facility like that exists, then we will prioritize it to be part of our monitoring list. We also look at the communities, if there are problems with the VDC. Because obviously, if the VDC is having a problem, it will also affect uh, the implementation of their project. And we also try to uh, take those um, communities on board. And also, like, um, mismanagement of funds. If we realize that maybe certain facilities are not putting the money in the, in the right use, we can also uh, prioritize it. When the project started, uh, the RIDs, we are basically the target. With central level, we are only doing the issue of management and trying to coordinate. But the actual implementation was done by the RIDs. The RIDs, we are contracted. In, the, in their contract, they are supposed to be monitoring, supervising uh, the facilities ar ar around their around that particular region, and then and giving all the quality of care uh, support when, when it comes to technical issues. Around 1992-1993, uh, the National Nutrition Agency so I mean thought about why don't we work with the Black Development Committees and establish what we call Black Support Groups. This is how the paths of the Black Support Groups come into being. We started in Kiang and Jara with 12 communities. We have about 10 indicators at the VDC level. Like, for, for example, if I say uh, knowledge is about trying to get the proportion of mothers who uh, can cite or for uh, complementary foods for the their children. At the community level, if you talk about the, the practice, it's about like number of uh, hand washing stations in the village, number of latrines covered with water and soap, and the waste management. But when this project came, as I told you earlier on, there is a supply side, there is a demand side. For them, they were the people who were supposed to do the demand side because we wanted to bring the linkage between the communities and the health facilities because without the people coming to the health facilities, you don't have health. Nous avons de programme.
si la manta min si la dem waxtan sama jekar mu ne ma wa demal duga ma dem duga si projet bi wa projet bi buma ci dugge man bin tade sante na ci yalla ndax projet amna ci wergu yaram amna ci xaliss amna ci wetteku wetteku yu bari amna ko ci progrès projet bi sama dom bi ni wa te dipp bom nak ba legui hopital bi ma mu ngi gën yok rek di cieñ rek di cieñ wa it facility have some areas the villages that they go for outreach and that is they go there every month at least once per month for outreach outreach meaning they go and perform all the services that they perform at the facility level they do at that community at that particular day and it starts by uh, involvement of the vdc and the vsgs around those fragment areas or around those villages <laughs> Ajibe, eh, fana nyin sude, eh nyin sude roko, eh ma, kodi, iyo, wala na de ma sude no, kodi, iyo kodi, iyo, kyo ni muso lo mi bi takal lo tano, abi takal no sile, iyo ten de ayi lo matale, bari ma jabi ba ma ni na lo forli. Some time ago, you know, when people get sick in the community, to transport them out of the village to the health facility was not easily done. Uh, for example, there used to be no nutrition education, but we were able to sign contracts with the VDC and the VSG so that the VSG members, through the social and behavior change communication material that we develop, domesticated to their level will go around the households educate the pregnant women tell them about the danger signs of pregnancy tell them if they want to deliver let not them deliver in the village but let them deliver at the nearest health facility well each village now have the avsg group and the vdc all the villages so now this message is sent to them and they will inform, always be informing their women, reminding them that at the clinic day is this day, we need to go for the clinics. So those women who need to go to the clinics. And when they go, the clinic starts with sensitization, information sharing, about the giving information on what has happened, the latest thing. Maybe if they are something they're expecting, like they're having patients, more patients on diarrhea, for example, an example, like diarrhea is having going to the facility, always, or malaria. Now that's going to be a topic that they will start with when they go to the outreach and start discussing that issue. That look, we have been seeing a lot of malaria cases. Now, what's the problem? Wow, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm good. Uh-huh. Guys, sorry, Derek. Well, guys, sorry. Derek. Ah, no. Hmm? Lingen wa ni yef amna solo. Yef si mandara gayi la boka yo hande andu yon umba. Wa lingen de warek ir bune ka moi. Ko hande gif nga fason yi. Lingen wa radefrek moi nga nyon lopitan. Kwam ka wane lien yun fi. Juro nyeti wahtu lende kumase si suba. Benyari wahtu lego le nyeti wahtu. Yana ngi dega wai kukis manda raga yana feka fitia nyarek dama opital bumak yana ngi dega ah wow so basically the benefits of the RBF results based maternal and child health nutrition project activities cannot be overemphasized it has improved access healthcare seeking behavior of our communities has greatly improved in terms of how soon they come to to the, to the health facility to seek for service when they are sick particularly the labor work where we recall that from history, the greater percentage of our women were attended to by uh, traditional birth attendants. Now we have seen a significant improvement on that. I may not be able to quote the statistics for that because it has a community link that the RHD can be able to say. But for the institutional deliveries, it has increased from 54% to 100%. Kill institutional delivery. From 2017 to date, all the deliveries that are conducted in this hospital are conducted by skilled attendants. Before, we used to have problem in availability of skilled personnel. But the, the, the project has also helped us to negotiate 
for, for more skilled personnel. And before that was not possible for all the deliveries to be taken care of by skilled personnel. But now we can comfortably say that from 2017 to date, all the deliveries are attended to by skilled personnel. So again, capacity has been built. Because now, as you say, you go to the facilities, they can display their graphs, you know, taking in charge of their own thing. What we did as a project, we recruited some people, you know, and posted them into the regions as project staff. And these are highly skilled people, uh, people who have been in the system. And they are not only from the Ministry of Health. Some of them were recruited from the private sectors, you know, others were working for other sectors, you know. And when we uh, advertised these positions, they came and they were ready to go up country to be the eyes and the ears of the project. But the most motivation comes from the regional health directorates, the health facilities, and the communities. Because as I told you earlier on, uh, RBF is based on contracting. We agree on a certain set of indicators. You implement those indicators. We come and verify and counter verify. And upon that, we transfer an amount of money to you. With regard to the health facilities, 40% goes back to staff incentives and 60% goes back to uh, to, the, to, to the development of the health facility. So what will happen when they share this money? They share it according to uh, how you work, I mean, the, your, your contribution toward the whole process. And this has brought a lot of uh, spirit, I mean, uh, team spirit among themselves because it was kind of a competition because they, they talk to each other. How much is your facility earning there? So we are earning 20,000, 30,000. How do we move up to 50,000? is by increasing our or making our indicators move up. So that alone bring the team to work together with this team spirit, which was not very forthcoming because each and every one would like to say, okay, we need to increase our earnings, we need to increase our incentives, and we make sure that all these things that we sign for, we look at them. For example, the completeness of the registers. For example, you know, looking at the reporting time looking at the indicators, looking at how many women do you get during the month to come for ANC, how many are delivering in our health facilities. All those things, you know, increased their motivation and they were really uh, highly motivated up to a point that now when you post somebody from the central region to the, uh, to the, to the peripheries or to the provinces, you know, they, will, they, will not, they, will, they, will, they are willing to go because they have seen the improvement not only in terms of monetary terms, but also uh, improving their environment because there are certain health facilities that have taken their money. What do they do? They did not share, they, they, they build quarters for themselves where they can stay comfortable. Uh, others have even improved their office environment. And through the project, we were able to help them, you know, to get air conditioners, get very good furniture, you know, get water supply, the environment is clean, so just to make the working environment conducive for them. So these are all motivating factors, you know, for one now to work in the, in the, in the rural areas. But the other one, and the most important one, is about the satisfaction of the clients. Because at the end of the day, if the people that you are working for are satisfied with the work that you are doing, you know, that's also serves an incentive for you, the worker, to do more. And I think, you know, the praises that they are getting from the communities is highly, uh, is very high and that's also very motivating for them. And seeing things happening during their era when they are there, you come to a health facility, there is no water supply, there is no electricity. And during your time, you get the water supply, you get the electricity, you know, you are able to buy television that you use for your leisure time, you know, the whole team coming around and watching football match or watching some other programs, I think it was very highly motivational. On my right hand side, the building you are seeing, it was built by the project and it was not there. It was just a small structure built by the Minister of Health. But when we started this project in 2016, we start, because the project, they, they give us 100%. 60% goes to the facility infrastructure and the 40% goes to the staff. All the, these structures you are seeing, it, it was put into our business plan and then we implement it accordingly. At the facility level, uh, that relationship is now very much cordial. And in fact, staff are more committed to serve now than before. RPF has come to at least help us change 
you know, or improve whatever we are doing. So we have taken that strategy greatly. You know, hospitals cost approximately 1.5 million per quarter. And 60% of this money goes to the development of the hospital. This is why you can see all this development in the hospital. If you go around, you'll see them inside the hospital ward, outside the ward, you know, protective GS for the cleaners, those are the environment and other things. You know, even we even dug a borehole out of these subsidies. Water used to be a challenge. Namek supplies used to be erratic in terms of water supply. No, we uh, dug our own uh, borehole. This is supplying us clean water, constant clean water. This is very, very important. That, uh, and we want to maintain this strategy, RBF or not RBF, Bansa Hospital will continue maintaining this because we've seen it, that it is a very good strategy. We have uh, maintained inside RBF strategy as one of the strategies that maintain peace, development, and motivation that is carrot and carrot. We see staff are very dedicated now. You hardly see someone coming for, uh, to work late. You know, you can hardly see someone roaming about in terms of when he's supposed to work. They always focus on whatever they need to do. Even meetings, myself not conducting meetings, I have something to be deducted from my subsidies. Bansang, they have doctors who are capable and, and they have facilities that they are able to use to take care of the secondary uh, service, to provide secondary services. So that is a comparative advantage within the region. All other health facilities, for example, they have almost nine health facilities within the uh, Central River region. They all send their referrals. When they have those cases, they send the referrals to Bansang Hospital to take care of the services. So automatically, they, uh, you, know, you know, they earn more from that. Uh, the issue of data quality is also very, very important. Because what we do, if the data that is reported from the health facility uh, and the one that we verified, if there is difference of plus or minus 5%, the facility will lose that money. They will not be paid. So uh, during, at the start of the project, and the, when they started implementing the project, you know, they used to have issues with data quality. What is reported and what has been verified, they used to have problems with that. But within the health facility, the management, they instituted what they call intern, uh, internal data verification committee. That looks at the data. When they collect the data, the committee will sit and look at the data before they report the data. In fact, so that has resulted to them not losing any of their indicators for a very long time. So the data quality has improved in the, in the, in the, in the health facility, so at Bansan Hospital. That also resulted to the, them getting a lot of money at the end of the month. So when the project started during the pilot phase, we were able to generate some funds. Those funds were used to rehabilitate the fallen fence, construct the gate, and repaint the whole facility buy some drugs in order to attract more patients to come to the facility. So the project has done a great job during that pilot, so that is why it was extended to other regions. So the staffs who were also here were very committed to see to it that the project succeeds in order to be extended to other projects. The project has contributed a lot towards supplementing the efforts of the Ministry of Health towards giving adequate or relevant health, quality health services to its citizens. The husband school is a very important. We have realized in this country that a family planning services has been here for many, many years. But still now, if you go to the statistics, what we're talking about is about 9%. And I think it's very, very slow, very, very small. And although it is improving, uh, but that has been the, 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 the figure that we have been always quoting. The problem is, uh, it started by, uh, I think it's a, it was a misunderstanding or misrepresentation or, 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 or break in communication somewhere. The target was the women, like let's go for the women and let them go for family planning. 
But eventually, we came to realize that we are leaving a very important component in family planning. That's why we are not moving very fast. Although we are moving, but not very fast. And the component we are leaving out is the men. Because without involvement of the men, the women would be scared to go, they would think about their marriage, the breaking of the marriage, because it, has, it can lead to a lot of things. So traditionally for us, we know uh, Gambia especially, uh, we go for many wives and many children. That's, that's something that is normal. You can see men now escorting their women to go to out outreach stations, to, to, to outreach. You can see men carrying their babies now, uh, their young ones, helping the woman to, to, to the clinic. It, it was not like that before. Project the book was a belly, no magazine, no matter any a good project state as belly, no matter the same, you didn't know your nose, the father for the farm chains. The forgetting, the forgetting a yoke. Well, the forgetting a yoke, Nick on your yom, then see the amnesty injuring. Man smudge a pele nose, sit pacao, smudge a pacao, no fee nose, smudge a nose, then their content some affair, digging what a pecata may see nose be fee, then their content didn't get the man gorla. Then you mean I'm a guru, I guess in the guru, you know, I'm a new one. Mangy to put us my Halebu Balu, the blend of content of Uba. This has been a great help to the facility because of the RBF projects that have been here for some years now. So right now this is what the patients need, but we have checked the OSA, does the oxygen saturation and everything is at normal range. Project of me lop tan hebi do mentori Allah project yara yeso be do lop tan on hebi valal mo yungal nyagi Allah du yara yeso burto me walu de me heba lekkel sabayi o bi dan naw ni mi jogi mi ari gam hebi lekki du wayi mo walu de samori buino hande har mi do wulla ko mi arata kono alhamdulillah rabbil alamin an kadi mo yide way mi selli kay kono fayin kadi himbe no fala beedugol sed yaara yeso himbe burta hebude lekki kin men ari de men selle de fawno wadi normal kono kay mo me dan fala kadi ya yo beedo kadi yeso burani ya yeso gila mi ari kay joni alhamdulillah mi samuri joni sed tay bi project bi ñewé gis nañ ne ani ne wéccé ko bu réussi dekk bi parce que nit ñi fi nekk ni amna ño xamné amna ci xam xam tay comme vsg bi nga xamné ño nekk ci bir dekk bi 
jangal nañu bari buma muna la wax ne 95% jigen di nek ci bir fas ñom ñep fi nek ni am nañ xam xam lu aju ci mbiri projet bi te lolu USG bi ñoko def gana bi nga xamne amé amé nañ support ci nana bi nga xamne ño amé programme bi ba paré am nañ ci xam xam moy tay ñun ñep gis nañ ne projet bi dafa ñew pour wax ñu nan lañu arrêter son bop ci walu wit geeram force moy ngaw da nga wara set lo muna def dom adama set rek moy di best moko yobu ci kanam soy lek da nga wara raxasu soy nan sax even soy nan dox sax da nga wara raxasu before parce que sa loxo bi nga dougal ci bir nda bi bu feke mu ngi am jangoro nga yor ko ci bir nda bi sax mu nga rotal jangoro ci bir ndox bobu nga jalar be ko nan ko kon lolu muna la jox jangoro be pare lolu yeb jange nañ ci because tay ker go dem ci bir fas amna raxaso kay so amu tipi tafa dina am bol bi nga xamne fofu lañ fofu lañu raxaso dossi yeb fi mu nek ni doss bo dem amnañ fa ndox amnañ fa sabu euh atay nonu lepp amna kon dafa melni lolu la deug deug projet bi nek na projet bo xamne ñun ci sun bop ñun xamna ñe wéccé wéccé bu reey am am nañu ko ci fas diiri ñaari at yi nga xamne ci lañ liggéey ak ñom té hit jox na jox nañu hit yokuté gana bi ñu joxé xam xam daf ñu joxé yokuté ah projet bi da mu nañu wax né jox nañu jox nañu yok nañu bu baaxa baaxa baax ba paré yok na hit djubo ci bir dëkk bi parce que bu ñëkka nit ñu bari xamanté wuñu hon waye tay projet bi suñu né nana ño ôté ño wara am general meeting ci pencen bi goor jigen ñepp dañuy génn ci ñew pour bu ga xam lan lañ nana ñëwé tay wala lan lañ ño wax ci ndax loolu liko waral moy interest biñ duggal ci bir dëkk bi parce que li ñun mënuñ ko xona liggéey suñu bop try nañ ñun mëna def pour mëna rehabilitate ci etien li fin bi place bi waye mënuñ ko na am waye bi nana ñëwé ak seen projet bi ñu gis ñu wan ñu nañu su ngeen sayene ak ñun contrat bi ngeen def nangam ñu fay leen ci lañ futté ko na xamna ñi liñ ñu wax ñun suñ defé loolu ñun dinañ am i can tell you this project has brought not only improvement in quantity in terms of the volume of people that come but also the services have improved quite a lot if you ask me about my view i will tell you and i am a strong believer because seeing is believing over the past four years we have seen a lot of things that have changed huge changes have taken place within the ministry of health and especially within the health facilities and the communities if you had to ask me i will say let the government of the gambia adopt rbf as one of the health financing mechanisms because it cannot be the only mechanism there are other mechanisms like the input base like health insurance you know and they are all part of the whole gambit of health financing but i'm a strong believer of research based financing and i will continue to advocate for it uh, to be used as far as the health system and other sectors are concerned